um, it's very early for me, it's not my hour, so I hope I'll be clear uh, and be on time. And also, uh, this talk is uh, fairly technical, and we have like code samples and all. Um, and I guess I'll go at a speed which I think is okay, but if it's kind of uh, too fast or too slow, just like uh, sign me somehow. And if we, if we uh, won't get to the end, then fine, we'll just like uh, do whatever uh, we have. I think it's uh, better to... Uh, see samples that you understand then rush to many samples that like no one gets, right? Uh, and anyway, the uh, slides will be online afterwards. Um, so just like a few words about me, uh, I am a faculty here at Bar-Ilan, working on uh, NLP and uh, machine learning for over 10 years. Uh, very recently, like in the past two years or so, uh, working on deep learning for uh, NLP. Um, I have this uh, book on the subject, which you can um, get on Amazon, I guess, if you want. Um, and uh, in my uh, lab, we've been working uh, on NLP a lot, and we're doing stuff with LSTMs over the past two years, and we have like these uh, very many models and more, and all of these uh, models, and again, many more, are implemented in uh, Dynet, which is this uh, toolkit which I will be uh, presenting today. Okay. Uh, so today's talk is basically about, about how to implement uh, neural networks in Dynet. And it will be about the code and not the theory. I mean, I assume that you already know the basics and you know uh, what a uh, neural net is, and maybe you have actually uh, done something with that, say in Keras or in TensorFlow, okay, or in other toolkits. Okay, so uh, uh, if you came here without background, and I'm sorry, it will be less useful for you, uh, but uh, hopefully you will get something out of it anyhow. Just out of uh, curiosity, how many of you uh, worked with uh, TensorFlow before? Okay, so a lot. Uh, this is much nicer. Uh, so now let's, let's uh, give you this kind of uh, brief overview of the uh, neural networks uh, toolkit landscape. Uh, and it's partial, we have many more of these, but like I think these are kind of uh, the uh, major players that people have uh, heard of, mostly. So we have uh, Tiano, TensorFlow, Keras, uh, Chainer, Dynet, and PyTorch. Uh, and if we would like to kind of uh, classify them into into groups, because that's what we do, we classify, right? Uh, then uh, you could say that like uh, Keras uh, is kind of separate than the others uh, because uh, it's a high level uh, kind of library um, where you kind of uh, have very kind of large building blocks which you kind of combine. And then all the others are more low level where you have to actually uh, define uh, your um, building blocks from scratch. And then if you uh, further classify, we get uh, this split. So on the top, we have uh, static uh, graph toolkits. Uh, and on the bottom, we have uh, dynamic graph toolkits. Okay. So uh, Tiano, TensorFlow, uh, and Keras, which are kind of uh, use them as their backend, are static. And Chainer, Dynet, and PyTorch are uh, dynamic. Um, Dynet was the first of these. Uh, and then the others uh, came along. And it also, uh, it's, um, Unlike the others, it's fast all, also on the CPU uh, for many things. And actually, for many things, if, if you have like uh, smaller networks or like uh, narrower with like less dimensions, it will be faster on the CPU than on the GPU in the other toolkits, even. Okay, so it's uh, very uh, competitive. And we have this uh, new cool feature, which is called uh, auto batching, uh, which I may uh, get time to speak about at the end, uh, which none of the other ones have yet. I think they will. Um, try to catch up soon. Okay, uh, so it's an open source toolkit. Uh, we have um, many commits, many, uh, not so many, but uh, quite a few contributors. Um, and basically it was uh, started by uh, Chris Dyer, back then at CMU. Uh, then uh, Graham Newbig did, uh, did a lot of uh, great work. He's also from CMU. And then uh, there is uh, uh, Paul Michael, who was kind of uh, giving it some more love lately, and me, who also uh, did stuff over time. And of course, we have uh, many more uh, people uh, contributing. Um, this guy here, uh, Joel Gross, uh, have uh, nice Scala bindings. So you can also call it uh, from Scala. Um, and the core engine is in uh, C++, unlike uh, uh, Matthew's uh, session to kind of uh, do it in Cyton. Um, so uh, the core is in, uh, is in uh, C++ and people actually use it also from C++, from, from C++ quite a lot. Uh, and uh, it does the heavy lifting of the kind of uh, uh, metric stuff using Engen. And then we have a Python wrapper, which is kind of a uh, thin wrapper, but we tried to make it a very uh, Pythonic. And this is actually Cyton uh, all the way. Okay, uh, and I will be talking about this uh, wrapper today because I don't expect you to write in the uh, in the C++ and also because you don't you don't need to. I mean, it's really uh, quite performant. 
Um, and all of the thing is built around the concept of a computation graph. So let's kind of uh, have this uh, very brief uh, overview. So let's say you have um, this network, which is uh, uh, the MLP, the uh, multi-level perceptron. So you have this like uh, linear thing over here, and then a tan H, and then some other linear layer, okay, on top. Um, so this is math, and you can read this, I hope, uh, and it can be expressed as, uh, so this guy can be expressed as this graph, uh, where like these are kind of parameter nodes and this is the uh, computation nodes, okay? And then uh, the the entire thing uh, is this larger graph, okay? And once you have this graph, okay, you can run forward on it to get the uh, the values of each node. So what is the value? And you can run backward to get the gradient, which is what you want to do when training, okay? So that's the uh, theory of how to, uh, to uh, train neural nets, uh, forward gives you the values, and then uh, backward is basically backprop, and you uh, get all of your uh, gradients. Okay, so if you can build this graph, then you can train a, a neural net, and all of the, the toolkits basically allow you to uh, build these graphs and then train. Okay, and the uh, difference between static and dynamic is that the, uh, the static one, you use some kind of uh, DSL to define your graph. So it's kind of a sort of Python, but not really language, uh, yeah, uh, domain specific language, in which you uh, define your graph. And then you, uh, the field, you just um, feed examples to the graph that you just built. And in the uh, dynamic frameworks, you use Python for uh, getting the graph without like extra la language, it's just pure Python or C if you want, but like Python if you're not a masochist. And then you uh, basically build a new graph for each example. Okay, uh, and uh, this is um, important where the, the different examples have slightly different graphs. For example, if you have an RNN, then every sequence has different length, and there are ways to kind of uh, go around this uh, in TensorFlow or Tiano by padding and, and stuff, uh, or bucketing or bucketing and padding, uh, but if you just like create one for each example, it's just much nicer, okay? And we can do it very easily and at the same speed. Basically, okay. So now I'll just talk about how to build these graphs uh, in Python uh, with the uh, API we have in Dynet. Okay, so the major players that uh, we have uh, in Dynet as as objects. So we have the uh, the graph itself. We don't really see it. It's kind of uh, behind the scene. It's a, a it's a singleton which we build. We have expressions which are nodes in the graph. Uh, we have uh, parameters, which are the thing we are uh, kind of optimizing over. We have a model, which is a collection of parameters. And we have trainers that kind of update these, uh, these uh, parameters according to the, uh, to the gradients and some rules. So SGD, Adam, and so on. Um, so, okay, here is some code, right? Um, so it's nice to kind of uh, take a picture of the slides. I'll have them online later. So if you don't want to you know, uh, make the effort, it will be fine. Uh, everything will be available. Um, okay, so you uh, import Dynet, that's easy. Uh, now you uh, create a new graph. So you do it for every example that you want to have a, a, a new graph for. Now we just uh, call input vector with some values and then this is uh, transformed into, into this thing V1 and V2. And now we can have V3, which is V1 plus V2, and you have these um, expressions. And then we can uh, concatenate uh, stuff into like, a, this expression, and then we can print uh, v6, and what we get is this expression object. Okay, so all the uh, so all all of these uh, v's, okay, um, they uh, look like just like Python computations, but they don't compute anything. Just like build this uh, this larger graph where basically v5, v4, v3, v6, v1, and so on are all nodes in this graph. Okay, uh, and the operations uh, define the the uh, the graph structure, and then if you want to get this value, you call it v6 np value, and then it will uh, run forward and return this uh, numpy array with the actual value of the computation. Okay, so this seems easy, right? Uh, and it will not get much more uh, complex than that. Uh, so basically, you create basic expressions, you combine them with operations. Uh, and each of these uh, expression represents some symbolic uh, thing that you want to uh, compute. And then you use um, either value or NP value or scalar value or vec value uh, or forward if you don't need this vector to just like run forward and get your, uh, your computation. Uh, and these are basically all sort of the same. Uh, so value just uh, wants to know if you uh, kind of um, figures out for you if you want um, an array or a kind of uh, vector or a kind of scalar and just 
does the right thing, but if you know what you're going to get, you, you, you just use this. Okay, but they're pretty much the same function underneath. Uh, and okay, so that's how you do uh, expressions, but again, in uh, deep networks or, or in uh, neural nets or in machine learning, uh, we want to train models, so we need parameters to, to train. Uh, so uh, parameters are the things that we optimize over, these are vectors or uh, matrices. A uh, model is the uh, collection of these parameters. Actually, in the upcoming version, it will not be called model mode, it will be called uh, param collection, uh, which is maybe a better name, uh, but you can think of, but a bit longer though, so it's a bit <laughs> a trade off, uh, but you can think of it as just a, a, a param collection, a, and you get parameters from the model, you ask it and then it kind of gives you, and then you can train a model just like updating its, its parameters. And these uh, parameters outlive the graph. So uh, when you uh, create a new graph, everything dies, but these parameters uh, persist in the background with the same values. Okay, so how you do parameters? So you create a model, that's easy enough. Uh, and then you add parameters to the model. So here we have uh, 20 by four and or a 20. So we have like P, B and PW, which are parameter. Okay, and then we uh, create a new graph. We have this input vector. And now uh, we create a parameter object from these parameters. Basically we're saying add these parameters to the graph. Okay, so here is just like this uh, matrix basically, and here we have it in the graph, okay, and we do it each time. And now we have x, w, and b, which are all uh, expression ob uh, objects, and we can uh, combine them and compute uh, y, okay, which is also an expression. And um, we can add parameters and we can do different initializations. I will not get into the details, but it's easy enough to, to do. And um, now, okay, so we can define models and parameters. Now how we do training, you initialize a trainer with your given model. Then you uh, compute gradients using uh, expression dot backwards on your last expression and you call trainer update. So here is the code. Um, so I, I have a model, I have a trainer on this model. I add parameters to the model, okay. Um, which is now just like uh, one vector of uh, 10 dimensions. Uh, now we have this uh, loop, which is a training loop, okay? Uh, it's kind of a silly objective, but um, so I create this uh, new graph. Uh, I get these uh, parameters from uh, my, uh, this expression from my parameters. Now I do a dot product uh, of it with itself, and I want to minimize that, okay? So that's kind of silly, but let's uh, 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 try and do it. And then we kind of uh, call forward, we have the value, and then we call backward. Now we have the gradients for V, which is the uh, parameter, and update, and that's it. Okay, so uh, this loop will uh, optimize V such that when he, um, uh, its uh, dot product with itself will be low. Okay, so it's not ideal, but like it, it works. Okay, and we have uh, different trainers that you can use, basically just uh, sw uh, switch this line with something else to get a different trainer like Adam or whatever you want to, to use. We like Adam, it's nice. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, how, do, how, how do you do it? You just kind of, as an overview, create a model, add parameters, create trainer, and then for each example, okay, and this is really different than TensorFlow, okay, you uh, create this uh, graph for the loss of this uh, 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 example, you run forward, you run backwards, and you update. Okay, so uh, this part for each example, uh, is the kind of uh, nice and easy uh, part that we have, which I, I believe is much more natural uh, to write um, and without any speed benefits. Okay, so now let's have this uh, example. We, we want to uh, write this uh, MLP, modular perceptron, for the XOR problem. Okay, so it's a simple uh, problem. We want to, uh, to train such that uh, two zeros uh, will give you a zero, one and zero will give you a one, uh, zero and one and one and one and one via zero. Okay, so it's kind of the basic things that uh, neural nets can do and uh, linear models cannot. Okay, uh, and we have this model form. So it's a sigmoid over this um, kind of MLP, like one layer thing. And this is our loss written in written in mathematics. And I hope you. Uh, so if you don't if you don't get why this is true, fine. Just like um, believe that that's the right thing to to use. Okay, so now let's have the uh, the uh, the code for that. So that's our data, uh, training data. We just have it in Python. Okay, uh, input output, and we have a model, and we uh, add parameters to the model. So uh, basically, uh, u, b, and v will be these uh, things. So we have this uh, network, uh, which is. Um, four and four and then like two for the output. Uh, we have a trainer and we have a loss, uh, which is a zero. And then we have this uh, training loop, 
okay so it uh, runs over your uh, data shuffling it each time uh, and then let's have a let, let's see the loop so uh, basically uh, for each data points x and y you create a new graph you add your parameters into the graph you have x as your inputs okay so that's basically that's this kind of uh, setup um, now you basically translate this into that which is actually very straightforward I think, right? Um, and then you, ha you have your y hat over here. Now you define your loss. Okay, so the loss, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's this guy. So basically just translate this into, into math, right? So uh, with Python, if y is zero, then uh, the loss is, and, and so on. Uh, then you get your uh, value, the, 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 uh, the, the forward value. So you kind of uh, see what your loss is. Then you uh, backprop the loss, and then you do train up it, and that's it. Okay, so that's basically our uh, uh, training loop, and we have now a complete neural network that trains something useful and works. Okay, um, and of course, uh, you want to have this uh, report code. Basically, uh, every few iteration, you want to kind of uh, print the loss or something that's, yeah, just like things that you add so you know that things converge. Okay, now let's uh, have this uh, bit of uh, refactoring because yeah, we are uh, programmers and we want to have nice code. Okay, so basically what we'll do is uh, transfer this into that, which is kind of uh, easier. So uh, input vector, predict, compute loss, and then uh, work with that. And then uh, predict is basically what we had before, just like in, in a function that has a name. Um, and uh, compute loss, again, just like what we had before in a function. So it's very easy to uh, mix and match these things and write uh, simple and elegant code, I think. Okay, so uh, the key points is that you create a new graph for each example. Uh, the graph is built by uh, composing expressions and the function takes expression and return expressions as the graph components. Um, and then now we have this thing about uh, word embeddings or uh, uh, lookup uh, parameters. So basically in NLP, but also uh, more generally, uh, we have this notion of uh, word embedding. So if we have a discrete feature, such as a word or some uh, discrete symbol, uh, we just map it to, to, to some vector. Uh, and this vector is a parameter of the model which is being trained. Uh, and if you've seen this before, then great, I, like you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen this before, it will be hard to explain it now, okay? Uh, but uh, basically, you want to uh, translate every word into a vector, okay? Or every symbol into a vector, okay? Uh, and, uh, and these vectors are parameters uh, of the model, okay? And they are trained with it, and at the end, you'll get that maybe uh, uh, symbols that uh, play similar roles will get similar vectors, uh, which is uh, how like word to vec uh, works or things like that. But it's uh, it's very common, right? So uh, you have like uh, so chair is like uh, this vector, on is this vector, noun is this vector, and so on. Then just like uh, concatenate them into your feature vector, okay? Unlike in like this uh, linear model where every it's like a one hot encoding. Okay, so that's what we are uh, going to work work with, and the uh, and the support we have uh, for this in uh, Dynet is uh, this guy here, add lookup parameters. Okay, so we just, uh, we are adding this, this table here with the, uh, with the vocabulary size and the, uh, and the dimension. So that's a table that has uh, 10,000 entries here, and each one of them is a, a 200 dimensional vector. Okay, so if we want uh, to get the, uh, the vector for symbol number uh, uh, 953, we'll just ask for it uh, from this table. Okay, uh, so, that, that, so that's how, how it works. You do a new graph and then you ask uh, look up on E for like the, the, the fifth element and you get uh, this or you can use the more Pythonic uh, idiom just like E at the fifth so item. The, okay, so, so this size is basically the number of features that you have. And that size, no, you have to guess. Um, but like uh, between 50 and 300 is <laughs> sort of good. Uh, we guess usually 200, but no, you have to play with it. I mean, it's, uh, and like um, smaller will be faster, larger will be slower. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, one uh, very important thing is that uh, this thing has like a sparse update, so it's fast uh, to use uh, in your networks, unlike other toolkits. Okay, uh, so now let's um, kind of see how we implement something from the literature. So we have this paper here, uh, nice paper about uh, doing uh, efficient text classification. And basically that's the model, it's called Deep Averaging Network. You uh, take your, uh, uh, the words in your document, you run it through something called a, a CBA, continuous, continuous 
big of words, then you have uh, two nonlinear layers, and then uh, softmax, and then scores. Okay, and uh, CBAR is basically this function. You get the embedding for each word, and you sum them, and that's it. Okay, uh, so let's see uh, how you how do we uh, implement that. So first we add all of, all of our uh, uh, parameters, basically uh, B, W, B, W, and the E over here, okay? Which is the, uh, are the embeddings. And now we have this uh, loop in which we go over the document and the labels in the data, okay? We have a new graph for each document, and then we just uh, predict the, the, uh, the labels, and probes is an expression, it's not really the, the, um, uh, the, the values yet, but if we call uh, forward on that, we'll get the values, okay? Uh, so now, how does, how does this thing look, okay? So uh, uh, predict labels, you first encode your documents into a vector, then you run it through the first layer and through the second layer, and then you do softmax on it, okay? Now, what's layer one? Uh, layer one uh, is this guy over here, so basically, uh, the, the, the two parameters and the tonnage over the, uh, the linear uh, transformation, and layer two is this guy, and then encode doc is the more interesting thing, maybe, because we haven't seen it before. So it's basically this loop, this loop okay? So, um, so every item in this uh, document is a word, okay? And we have this uh, table which we built before that will translate from a word to an index, okay? So now uh, we have this uh, list of numbers, which is the, uh, the word indices. And then we basically do a lookup for this index. So we have a, a, a expression vector here. And now we have a list of expressions, okay? And now we sum them uh, using um, the, the dynet uh, sum function. And we have this, uh, this sum expressions, okay? And it's called isum and not sum because if you want uh, from dynet import all, we don't want to, um, yeah. Uh, to lose some, so that's so that's the reason for the slightly weird name. Uh, okay, uh, so that's basically it. Now we have to uh, to have the loss and run forward and backward and update. Uh, so the loss basically we uh, we translate the label into a number because it should be a number, uh, and then we basically uh, pick this this index from the uh, prov. This is an expression. We take the log, the negative, and that's it. And this should be die dot log and die dot pick, but yeah. Okay, and then uh, if you want to, to classify and not to, uh, to train, we just take these probes, have the NP values, now it's this uh, uh, numpy ve um, vector, and we call out max on this, and then uh, translate the number back to a label. Okay, so I think, uh, at least for me, it's a very idiomatic uh, Python code that's easy to understand, even if you haven't um, done these things before. Okay, I'll skip, I'll skip that. And then you can also have something kind of uh, more, um, kind of more elegant, I guess, uh, with objects. Uh, so a, a very common pattern that we uh, use, if you want to basically reuse this kind of an MLP kind of thing, right, uh, a few layers, um, then what we have is we have an object, which is an MLP, and the init functions get a model and dimensions, okay, and then basically um, adds uh, all of these uh, uh, parameters to the, to the model, and then we have this call function which basically executes uh, or like um, gets an input and returns an expression. Okay, so uh, in expression, out expression. Okay, and then we can just like um, create this new ML MLP with um, like the model and this uh, dimensions and then nonlinearity, and just call it like that. Okay, so uh, we get a nice and 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 short code, and this could have just been a function, but here we basically tie. The, the function and the, and the parameters into this kind of nice object. And then we don't have to kind of, uh, I think this is a global anymore, so it's nice to work with. Okay, so to summarize this part, we've seen the concept of a, a computation graph. We've seen expression, which are basically nodes in the graph. Uh, we have parameters and we have uh, the local parameters, the embedding uh, tables. We have a model, we have trainers, uh, and basically we uh, create a graph for each example and then compute the loss back prop and update. Now let's talk about RNNs, which uh, really kind of what drives a lot of uh, things in uh, sequences or in language. Okay. So what is an RNN? Uh, these are models for uh, sequential data. The input uh, is a sequence of vectors, which can be arbitrary length, and the output is also a sequence of vectors with the same length as the input. Okay. 
And so it looks like that. You have uh, your inputs, your input here it's x1 to x5, and at each uh, step you you feed it into the RNN or the LSTM or the GRU or whatever, uh, and you get uh, some output at the end. And then uh, this output h1 is also this guy, which which is kind of fed to the to the next state, uh, where you also feed an input and get a state and so on. And then at the end you have this uh, output vector, and you also have it for each of the uh, states. Okay, so that's our model. We want to uh, feed in this uh, sequence of uh, vectors and get back this, uh, this sequence of vectors, or the last one, depending on what you want to do. Okay, and then uh, after we have this, we just uh, feed this to some network, say an MLP, and then some source marks, and then we do prediction based on this, this uh, whole sequence. And here you can basically uh, put whatever you want. It could be more complex, but that's uh, something very common that you do. So say you uh, feed in a sentence, and then you uh, predict its sentiment. It's kind of the um, toy example that everybody kind of likes to, to, to talk about. Okay, and basically different sequence lengths mean different, uh, different RNN chains length. Uh, and uh, in something like TensorFlow, uh, you will basically have to create um, this, I don't know, a 50 uh, length RNN. And then if, ev if everything, if, if something is like larger or, or longer, you have to truncate it. And if it's smaller, you have to pad. Okay, which is kind of silly because all of the, the, the whole benefit is that these things are of different lengths, right? That's the whole uh, point. Uh, so the way we, we have it uh, in, uh, in Dynet is we just like build one for each example. So we have these, uh, builder, these builder classes, which will uh, like LSTM builder, okay? And you kind of uh, create a builder, which basically says, okay, one layer, uh, 64 inputs, hit, um, 128 uh, hidden uh, layers, and you add these, these to the model as parameters. Okay, then you uh, create uh, the kind of uh, first state for the RNN, and then you uh, feed stuff in. So uh, state add input with some uh, vector, you get back the next state, and you can call the output, okay, to, to get the, the expression for the output. Okay, so uh, let's see it uh, the, in code. You have your new LSTM builder, you get your initial uh, state. Uh, then uh, for every X uh, in your uh, list of Xs, okay, you basically add your input uh, to S and uh, update S. So you basically build this uh, through the loop, okay? And then at the end, uh, you just take uh, the output of the last S, which we have here, you do the MLP, which is uh, uh, semi four on top, you call softmax and you have this graph. Okay, so that's how you uh, you create this graph, uh, and this loop is is fast, so it's it, it really is working uh, pretty uh, fast. Okay, so now let's see a larger example, okay, to kind of uh, show what things really shine. So we've seen MLP, we've seen RNNs, uh, and these are also easy and Keras and uh, TensorFlow and Tiano. Okay, uh, and where uh, we really get these uh, benefits of uh, Dynet is where you have some kind of uh, dynamic structure to the network. Okay, so it's kind of more complex than one sequence and, and, and an output. So let's have this network. Okay, so this is a by LSTM tagger. Uh, it's a very common architecture in, uh, in NLP these days. Basically, you have uh, words at the bottom. Uh, you have uh, two LSTMs, like two RNNs, one uh, getting the things in the kind of uh, forward order, another one getting them in reverse. Then you concatenate, okay, uh, each pair of uh, forward and reverse vectors. Okay, then you feed this to an, to an MLP, and then you uh, have your uh, tag prediction. Okay, and if you kind of uh, focus on this tag, then when you uh, predict it, you get basically inputs uh, from all of the words. Okay, so all of the words go, uh, going from the beginning up to tag and from the end to the tag. Okay, uh, and then you basically uh, uh, predict this tag based on the on on all the sentence. Okay, so how do we build this network uh, in uh, in Dynet? Okay, so let's start with this uh, uh, forward layer. That's just uh, an RNN. Okay, so you, you have your uh, word lookup for your uh, parameters. Uh, we have a forward LSTM builder, okay? Now we have a new graph. We have the kind of initial state and we have embeddings. So we kind of uh, represent each word as a vector. Uh, that's basically uh, take the index and do the lookup, okay? Uh, and then uh, we have this list uh, of, uh, of the uh, uh, forward expressions. Okay, which is basically a loop where you do this uh, loop that I've uh, just uh, shown you, where you basically add words to the LSTM and get uh, the, the output for each one. 
okay? And this is a, a very common operation, so we can just write it as, as this, okay? Um, so the, the transduce call uh, basically takes a list of expressions, feeds them, and, uh, and, uh, and returns a list, okay? And okay, so so now we have this part built. Okay, uh, now let's do that. Basically, we have an, a, one more LSTM builder, and then we uh, transduce on the reversed list. Okay, and that's it. Okay, uh, very natural. And now we have to do this uh, concatenation. So we uh, zip the the forward and the reverse backwards. So we uh, so we reverse them again. Okay, and then we. Uh, uh, each pair we concatenate into an expression. So, so now we have a list of, uh, uh, of all of these, basically. Okay. Now for the MLP, we just add more parameters here, and we uh, just add this um, kind of nonlinear thing, and that's it. Okay. So that's the whole network. Okay. Um, and now let's focus a bit on this guy, okay? The 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 word. Okay, so until here it's nice. We can also do it in uh, other other toolkits. A bit annoying, but you can do it, okay? Uh, now let's uh, kind of see the kind of uh, real kind of uh, uh, cool stuff here. Uh, so let's look at this guy, okay? So as I said before, this basically uh, have one vector for each word, okay? So you uh, so you uh, take your word, you 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 get its index, and then you uh, look it up. Now. Uh, here we have this world engulfed, and maybe we don't have an index for it. We, it it's a world that we did not, haven't seen before. Okay, so, and it's not in our table. So what do we do? So we can have this unknown symbol, but maybe a nicer solution would be to have this uh, other um, uh, by RNN, okay, that reads the, the characters from the, um, from like left to right and from uh, right to left, take the, the last character of each thing and then does this uh, concatenation. That's something which is kind of, uh, kind of common to do uh, these days. Uh, and so basically we, we, we want to kind of take this, which used to be a vector and replace it with this kind of smaller network, uh, which also kind of uh, gives you a vector. Okay, so these words, which are common, are just like word embeddings. This word, which is kind of rare, is basically uh, an RNN over the characters. Okay, uh, and doing this thing in uh, TensorFlow would be a real pain because some of the inputs are of this kind, some are kind of these networks, these are, uh, have uh, different sizes, and so on. Uh, and let's see how we do it in uh, Dynet. We basically, so we have to have these like uh, two more builders and this kind of uh, more uh, lookup table that's just like more parameters, and then we just uh, take this function which we had before and we uh, replace it with this function, okay? Uh, and what this does uh, is basically if uh, we if the kind of uh, word count for our word uh, is more than five, we kind of uh, have uh, kind of uh, high certainty for this. We just do as before, and otherwise. We basically uh, transduce and uh, transduce and concatenate and just like build this kind of uh, uh, smaller graph for this world, okay? And that's it. And we have this uh, network. Uh, and then we just basically uh, took uh, this code, which we had like from uh, here below, and we put it uh, in this uh, function. So it has a name now. It's called the build tagging graph, okay? Uh, and then uh, if we want to just uh, tag a sentence, we build the graph. We have this kind of uh, vectors for each position. Uh, and then we run on, uh, uh, on each of them. We have softmax and uh, we have the value for each vector. So we have this kind of um, expressions. Then we just take the argmax and get the tag <coughs> Python code. Okay. And the loss is like that. I will not get into the, the details. Okay. Uh, and then this is a kind of uh, progress report of the training. And this is a kind of uh, training loop. You uh, compute the loss, you sum it, you um, run backward, and you update. Okay. And you also uh, keep track on how many things you have tagged because you want to don't know it uh, and kind of have uh, some stats at the, at the end. Okay, so uh, to summarize this part, uh, we've seen how to implement the uh, BioSTM tagger, where some words are actually uh, not word embeddings but uh, an extra LSTM on the, on the characters. Okay, um, and this is kind of a pretty dynamic uh, graph structure. And now let's talk about how you do batching. So if you have heard of batching before, um, well, also if not, I'll just uh, give, give you the uh, gist of it. Basically, the thing is that if on a modern computer, either on a CPU or GPU, uh, you, if you do uh, these, uh, these three operations, 
okay um vector by matrix time uh, equals uh, a vector and if you so so if you run these trees it will be overall k by m by n operations and if you run this guy which is basically concatenate this into a matrix and then do this uh, operation it's also k by m by n but this is much 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 faster on uh, every modern hardware basically okay so you want to if you can if you uh, like doing stuff with the same matrix or basically uh, doing things on the on doing the same thing on many vectors you want to first make them a matrix and then do this thing okay uh, and this is essential for like uh, efficient training in PyTorch or in um, or in uh, TensorFlow or all of these toolkits it is less important maybe for uh, for the network, but it also helps okay so we want to have things in this form now, if we have, say, uh, three RNNs, okay, uh, what we would uh, do is basically we'll uh, have them as one RNN. We basically uh, concatenated the, the inputs, and then we get these outputs back. And then we have to, uh, to, to manage them. Okay? Now, what happens if these are of different lengths? Okay? Now, what you do is basically you, you have this thing, uh, where basically you have uh, padding at the bottom and masking at the top. Okay, uh, and as things kind of uh, grow more complex, this becomes very, very annoying to uh, to work with. And we uh, support this kind of uh, thing in also in Dynet, and that's how it's used everywhere, basically. But it's really annoying. It's confusing with wireless TMs. It's practically impossible with our more with our more uh, complex networks. And now we came up with this thing called auto batching. Okay, so we want to uh, have batching for uh, complex networks with less pain. And the idea is that for us, uh, doing this uh, manual batching is like writing an assembly, okay? You are not supposed to do it. I mean, you can if you want to have like, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take a question at the end if you, if you will. It's soon, okay? So um, we would like to, well, we can use assembly if we want to have like uh, super performance, but maybe we have compilers that do it uh, better than most of us, most of the time. Right, uh, so he, so humans should not write batching code. That's kind of the the uh, premise, and uh, we go uh, towards that goal. Uh, so our solution basically, if you have uh, this thing, you have uh, three sequences. You just build uh, a, a a graph for each one of them, which is which is easy to do, just like these uh, loops that I've uh, shown you before. Then you combine them into uh, this kind of uh, single graph. Basically, you take say this vector and this one and this one, and you sum them. So you have like uh, one graph now. And then you uh, do stuff on this batch, basically, and uh, that's it. Okay, so everything will be done uh, behind the scene in Dynet, which will identify which matrices can go together with which, uh, and we'll just basically batch things for you automatically. So that's kind of a pretty cool tech. It happens on the fly, and uh, it's very fast. Okay, and now let's see uh, how these things work with, uh, say, a three RNNs. So what is a three RNN? So you have a three like that. Uh, say it have like this uh, sentiment kind of uh, thing example uh, and basically the idea is that you uh, take uh, two nodes and you combine them and then you get this like extra vector and then you uh, combine these and so on okay so it's a tree shaped network and the thing is that uh, for every uh, example you have an, a different tree so a, a different network okay now writing batch code for this is very very annoying okay also writing this in uh, say tensorflow is very annoying but it's possible Okay, anyhow, uh, so that's how it looks um, in our code for like a, a, a single um, code. So this is a training loop. Here we uh, define parameters and here we basically uh, build this tree in a recursive way. I will not go through the code, but it's kind of short, right? It's not uh, something uh, uh, too complex and that's basically it, okay? Uh, and then in this uh, training code, you basically uh, have your epochs, and then um, f you read examples, okay? And when you read them, you read a tree and a label, and then you basically um, run this uh, tree builder of, on your uh, tree. You have your uh, loss based, based on the label, and then the kind of usual forward, backward update, okay? And now have the uh, same uh, thing in the batched version, okay? So this is the same, okay? We did not change that which is very different than the other toolkits. This is basically the same code. And what we change here is this, okay? So basically now we don't read examples, we, we, we read a batch. So we have now a list of trees and a list of labels, okay? Now, uh, be before what we had, 
uh, is we took our um, builder, had the, 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 the tree as an input and the output and have the loss. And here we have the same thing in a loop, okay? So basically uh, we do this thing for each uh, example and then we sum them and then we run for the macro. Okay, so, and we have a, a cool batching, uh, and if you want to uh, kind of uh, measure that, so that's our speed on the CPU, that's our speed on the uh, GPU, as we have a kind of larger batch size, okay? And uh, that's the speed of uh, uh, TensorFlow fold on the uh, CPU on the, and the GPU. And trust me, looking at the code for this uh, fold thing is really painful. I mean, I looked at it for like a day and it did not figure it out. Okay, it's a really uh, complex toolkit, and for us, I mean, it's, it's this. I mean, it's very in intuitive. It's a bit of a, a small font now, uh, but if you look at it more closely on your own laptop, it's very easy to follow. So, uh, to conclude, we want the uh, flexibility to uh, handle the, the kind of structures that we like to use in our networks. Uh, we want to code in the way that we uh, think about models. Basically, write imperative code that creates what we want to do, and then just uh, run forward and backward, okay? Uh, and we get the, uh, the tools for it uh, from Dynet, and we welcome your uh, contributions to make it even better. Thank you. Any questions? You had a question like that? No, no, no. It was resolved. Okay. So the the question was that um, we the entry to the to the back, to the backward is a loss uh, expression, which we then uh, kind of uh, uh, back propagate from, and then we get our gradient. And you want to feed in a gradient? Yeah. Where exactly? We do not oh, okay. follow that. So imagine that I have back Okay, we do not support this yet, and I will not repeat because it's a bit kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, very specialized, but it's easy to add. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we can do it. Uh, we just uh, need someone to open the uh, um, kind of issue on GitHub, and it will happen eventually. Yeah. It's really, it's uh, kind of a technical thing we don't have yet. Yes. Right. Yeah. You have a local sequence. You cut it somehow, you take all the... Uh, if you have, so the question is, if you have a, a very long input sequence, do we uh, cut it or not? It depends on what you want to do, right? Uh, so if you want to kind of uh, train on all of it, uh, just like run all, on, on all of it, if it's uh, too large for memory, you have to cut it. Um, and I mean, in this, in this sense of performance, so for speed, you... Accuracy, so it depends on the task. So if you uh, kind of think that you have uh, this kind of a very uh, long range dependencies and you uh, somehow believe that the first word can, in can influence the word at the end, okay, then you don't want to cut it. Or you want to do some trick where you cut and not. And if you don't believe it, and you have, if you think that everything is local, then yeah, you, you can cut, but that's basically a design issue and it's really different in every network. It's not, yeah. <coughs> So the question is, how can we build graph dynamically and they're still fast? Uh, and the answer is that, okay, we do put some effort into building it quickly. So uh, it has a low level uh, C at the end, uh, which does kind of uh, very uh, efficient memory allocation and so on. Um, but then when we execute it, we just like do it as it's built. We don't do any optimization. And I have no idea why uh, TensorFlow takes like uh, half an hour to compile a model and then reach something with the same speed. I don't know. Uh, we, we just, I have no idea why it's so slow. We are fast because we design it to be fast. Yes, I have no better answer for this. Uh, at the back there and then, yeah. It works with, with, uh, with uh, Python 3. It does not work on Windows yet because of Agen. Yes. Um, it's kind of uh, similar to uh, to PyTorch in the kind of uh, spirit. Uh, I I think we are better on the uh, on the CPU still because of uh, various issues. Uh, PyTorch is a very nice uh, kind of uh, uh, toolkit as well. Uh, it definitely has a kind of stronger uh, commercial support than us because we are uh, three academics uh, or like two and a half academics. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and their Facebook, um, 
but uh, we also have features that, that, that they, they, they don't have, uh, such as uh, auto batching and, and so on. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a very efficient toolkit. Uh, it's not as well supported as PyTorch, but it's a bit more cutting edge in some areas. Uh, it's not so easy to combine projects. Uh, it's, I mean, in an ideal world, sure, let's do it. Uh, in the real world, I mean, that's not how it works. I mean, also like Tiano and TensorFlow, the same thing, let's combine them. No, it will not happen, right? Uh, yes. What's the trainer model? Can you serialize it for different Oh yeah, you can uh, definitely save and, and load models. Uh, currently, it's done with an annoying boost format, and then if you have a different version of boost, it will not work. But uh, we already have in GitHub this version that does without boost, and it's kind of uh, much more nicer to use. It will be out in like a week or so, or not, like a few. But uh, it's, it's there, the code is there, we just need to kind of uh, push the new version. So we don't have a very good uh, ConvNet support yet. I mean, we do have support for it. It's not as tested as the other things because it evolved in the uh, NLP community. Uh, people have used it uh, in non-NLP stuff, but with uh, still uh, discrete data, okay? Uh, but it does do convolutions if you uh, want it uh, to do. Uh, we don't have like uh, pre-trained, uh, like uh, VGG models or whatever that people are using in, in other toolkits. Uh, so if you want to do images, maybe not your uh, first choice, or you can just like, uh, Try and then we'll uh, improve over time. So uh, it is supported actively. Yes. Uh, the GPU support is actually very easy to uh, to add. Basically, uh, if you run it with a flag that says use GPU, it will use a GPU instead of the CPU. Probably. I mean, uh, I don't know enough about time series. We can kind of uh, talk about the kind of use case later. But uh, kind of technically, it's suitable. Uh, I mean, it, you, you can uh, think of like words as a time series, right? So if you can encode your date or your time uh, as kind of a discrete vector somehow, or as a vector somehow, even con continuous, you can like uh, fit it in and get a result. Uh, would that be? Yeah. 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 Yeah.